somehow you manage to contain yeah, pull it off anyway and and organize uh, all his madness and his hysteria uh, into something productive for the screen which was a hard work uh, and and I deserve some sort of medal of honor as a soldier <laughs> Paul Holdengraber show filmed at Andal's Fifth Avenue. He didn't reward you very beautifully. Oh, which um, is fine, yes. He, he, um, he, I, I... In, in, his, in his book called The Autobiography of Klaus Kinski, Klaus Kinski Uncut, um, he says, although I constantly try to keep him out of his way, Herzog sticks to me like a shithouse fly. The mere thought of his existence here yeah. in the wild wilderness turns my stomach. When I see him approaching in the distance, I yell at him to hold. I shout that he stinks, that he disgusts me, that I don't want to listen to his bullshit, that I can't stand him. I keep hoping he'll attack me. Then I'll shove him into a side branch of the river where the still waters teem yeah. with murderous piranhas. Piranhas. Piranhas, and I'll watch yeah. him shred to, him to bits. But he doesn't do it. He doesn't attack me. He seems unfazed when I treat him like a piece of shit. Besides, he's too chicken. He attacks only when he thinks he'll keep <laughs> the upper hand. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Yeah, no, what, what you didn't read now is the following two pages of invectives. One, yes, I mean, one after, one the after it's, another. It's, it doesn't end, yes. You, you only gave us a very, very brief moment, well, but the book is full of it and much longer. And much, much longer. I can read more the last, beautiful ones. I can, I, I can read the last, the last paragraph that I didn't read of this page. Now I hate the killer's guts. I'll shriek into his face that I want to see him croak like the llama that he executed. He should be thrown alive to the crocodiles, exclamation point. An anaconda should strangle him slowly, exclamation point. <laughs> A poisonous spider yeah. should sting him and paralyze his lung, exclamation point. The most venomous serpent should bite him and make his brain explode. No panther claws could rip open his throat. That could be much too good for him. No, the huge red ants should piss into his lying eyes and gobble up his balls and his guts. And he should catch the his. plague, <laughs> syphilis, malaria, yellow fever, <laughs> leprosy. It's no use. The more I wish him the most gruesome death, the more he haunts me. Beautiful, yes. In, in fact, uh, I, I helped him along uh, a little bit in finding even more vile expletives. Uh, and I brought, uh, uh, I brought the condensed version of the Oxford English Dictionary, which is only two volumes and in tiny, Sorry. tiny script, yeah. yes. And, and we were looking for expletives. To together, he together, and you. Yes, yes. At you one point, him. I helped him with more beautiful, colorful expletives. But, uh, more ex and, and, he's, yeah, and, and he, he was always very, very open. He said, Werner, this, uh, uh, this film, uh, sorry, this book has to sell. It has to sell the vermin, and he meant the readers. The vermin out there needs this. So he needed to feed the vermin. That was one side. The other side was, of course, he hated me with... Uh, all his last fiber in his body. At the same time, he liked me a lot. So it was very ambivalent and very beautiful in a way that, that we had this kind of relationship. Um, we complemented each other very well. And uh, in, in a way, uh, he knew that I was the one who would make him better than, in, than any other one uh, in the world who was doing films. And, and he couldn't because stand you could, it. You could he, bring something out of yes, him. Yes, but he couldn't stand to give credit to anyone. So that, that somebody else was mentioned next to him was unbearable for him. It was completely ego, ego not egomaniac. It was uh, egocentric. It was, it was a you need manic. A new, you need a new word, nearly. Yes, you, you, it, it, you can't describe it. Uh, I mean, in, at the, at the uh, uh, beginning of Aguirre, you, you have that extraordinary opening and yeah. where you speak about also, you, th there's been commentary about how he wanted to overshadow, as it were, the landscape. Yes, and, and he, but besides not only that, he wanted to have a shot of the landscape with Machu Picchu in the foreground, uh, the postcard vista, 
And I said to him, no, the power of this is in the detail, in a more limited shot, in a vertical cliff coming down in the soldiers going zigzag. It's not the postcard picture. And, and it's a picture which reminds me a little bit of Hercules Segas, whom I found much later, a Dutch painter in 1620s, 1630s, who had visionary landscapes that we have only seen in the 20th century, or not even in the 20th century. And, and I had a different understanding of landscape, of inner landscape, which he didn't have. So, of course, there was there was huge conflict, huge, I mean, and, and it had nothing to do with egos. It, it was a different concept of understanding a landscape and, and understanding not, it not as a beautiful backdrop, like in postcards or like in commercials, which he had in mind. For me, this was an inner landscape. And I had to in the landscape of the, a, the a soul. landscape of the soul. That's why it's yes. your, your exhibition of uh, Hercules right. Segers at, the, at exactly, the Whitney yeah, is about yeah. about the hearsay of the soul. Yes, exactly. And he had no sensory organ for it, and he didn't have the intellectual capacity for it. So in this case, a, 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 a brutal fight, and I insisted the camera would do this and nothing else. And and then he wanted to be a head of this army with grim face and coming straight at the camera. And I said, no, Klaus, here is a threat of 450 soldiers, an entire army descending into the lowlands of the jungle. And only bit by bit, the leading character, the villain, is, is going to emerge. And this is a process which is very exciting for an audience. He didn't understand that either, but I took him out of this wonderful shot. He had to be eliminated. And of course, over such things, you had to have a, a conflict, which was a natural one. A conflict and also utter and sheer confidence in your view. Yes. And that have you, have you I ever outconfidenced him. I outgutted him. I outlasted him. I outfigured him. I outfilmed him. I out, uh, uh, somehow outperformed him even. And, you, and this, I, I give yeah. you an example, and, and I mean, it shows the amount of, of egomania in the man. We distributed in our camp in the jungle uh, breakfast on days where there was no shooting, and uh, uh, each hut would have coffee and the camera people and then the light people and the sound people, and in a row, in, in a certain sequence of things. And, uh, of course, the last hut would only have the lukewarm coffee. So we changed order. On that very day, Kinski was the last in line. His coffee was lukewarm. And I heard him screaming from 300 feet away out of his mind because his coffee was lukewarm. But the situation was this. We had a plane crash. And we had a radio, a shortwave radio, which was only garbled messages. We knew something cataclysmic had happened. We knew that we only knew the plane was down, six people in it. We tried to figure out where was it, can we send out a rescue party. Kinski arrives screaming, already foam at his mouth, and steps that close in my face and yells at me for an hour and a half. And I try to persuade him, I try to say, Klaus, we have a plane down. Six people may be dead. We have to organize a search party. And he would yell about his lukewarm coffee. He would yell about this. And I outperformed him. You know what? I went to my hut because I had one last piece of Toblerone, this triangular yes, yes, Swiss yes. chocolate, which was of the highest value in the jungle. I mean, I had kept it for weeks and weeks hid it away, uh, wrapped it away against the ants and so on, and, and I had this. And I came back with this piece of chocolate and I peeled off the, uh, the foil of it and ate it right. I stepped that close into his face and ate the piece of chocolate. And that was too much for him. He just fell silent. And he wiped his froth away. It, it, you see that the froth at his mouth would harden it was very hard sort of froth. After an hour, it, it solidifies somehow. and wiped it off and then he, he left. And some of this was, was caught on film by... Not this one. Not this no, scene. No. A, a, few, a few moments, milder moments of that, yes, were caught on film. But, uh, and it's fun to watch it today. 
and, and the film I made on us, uh, My Best Fiend. Fiend. My Best Fiend, uh, I made that eight or nine years after he died. And all of a sudden, not, not all of a sudden, slowly, 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 time that had passed has a miraculous uh, quality. It makes things milder. It, uh, I saw everything with humor. Well, I was about to say. With warmth. Yeah. And, and the sudden, audience. It's a very caring, and the a very audience, warm, funny film. And the audience sees they things laugh. that laugh. They laugh a lot, yeah. Kinski always yeah. said, ah, it's so erotic. He would even call in the photographer, and the photographer had to do 2,000 photos snapping in, in three hours. He, Kinski needed that to be photographed. Snap, 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 snap. And he would embrace a tree and fornicate with a tree in order to show how erotic wild nature, nature. was. And I said to him, Klaus, uh, I think you are wrong. The jungle is not erotic, it is obscene. There's obscenity out there. There's rotting out there. There's uh, fornication out there. I mean, the ugly uh, forms of, of violent fornication, asphyxiation of vines that kill off the trees and uh, collective, a sense of collective murder. Whatever is out there is out for murder. In and, a way, and in some way, we should keep a. Di we can we can look at the jungle, but we should keep a respect distance. Respect it, yeah, respect it as it is, it is. Yes, and if you are not a native who lives in the jungle and has a different rapport with the jungle, uh, we better have a good look what what's out there, and we do not. We should not somehow romanticize it. You have you have said um, that one of the reasons, perhaps a main reason, you wouldn't become an American citizen is because America is a country, in many of its states, it still executes people. Yes, but for the same reason, don't, don't turn it against America, because I live here and I love your country. Um, and in some uh, instances, of course, I'm ambivalent, but I would not become a, a, a citizen of China either nor a citizen of Pakistan or a citizen of Egypt or many other countries. All the huge populous countries in the world uh, still have capital punishment. Some of them have give, done away and with it. Russia, Russia, for example, just last year, I think, which is a huge achievement. It's a, it's a great achievement of Vladimir Putin, who is always put down and it's it's still some sort of a strange reflex of the Cold War and about dreams of democracy but nobody looks at wh where is democracy for example in China nobody uh, puts down the Chinese leadership as being vile and debased and uh, power hungry and so but uh, if you look at Putin and I always look at politics uh, uh, without uh, this kind of tunnel view of ideology I'm one of the very few thinking people here in America who in a way respects Richard Nixon, Tricky Dick, who uh, in my opinion was an important president, a very, very important president. When you look at the achievements, at some very monumental achievements of his pre 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 sorry, no. presidency, when you look at Tricky Dick uh, as, as complicated as the man was and as pathetic as sometimes he was. Uh, it doesn't matter, he was an important president. Just go into, go into Looking his at achievement. The facts. Look at the achievements, yes. So, uh, Same thing uh, with Tricky Vladimir? Well, he's, he's, a, he's a man who uh, exerts power. I mean, he's not, he doesn't have the velvet gloves. Uh, but uh, Russia, you have to imagine, Russia was, I mean, the Soviet Union came apart. Russia was unraveling. Um, and uh, the Chechens, of course, wanted to, were centrifugal in the Tatars, in the Kalmyks, in the Uyghurs, not the Uyghurs, but uh, uh, all the tribal areas were, were coming apart and wanted to have autonomy or their own states. He held the unity of the, the country together with an iron fist. But uh, you have to look at uh, Russian under, Russia under Yeltsin. It was kleptocracy. He allowed the country being robbed of all its resources and every single one of these oligarchs 
oligarchs, they were, they were criminals, robbers. They all fled because they know they should be hanged. They should be hanged by their balls. And they, uh, they stole, for example, like Shell Oil or BP, owned by the Gambino family or Gotti or the big, big criminals out there. And uh, Putin put a stop to that and made them pay taxes now. They're so paying taxes. You're not following the, the current trends of the way people see a Putin or see a Nixon? Uh, no, because I look at what, what he's doing and I have seen the Soviet Union and I've seen Russia shortly after uh, after the dis, uh, disarray of the and the coming apart of the Soviet Union. It was, it was a time of utmost misery uh, and where dignity of, human pe of the Russian people was, was out the window. And, and now, gradually, pensions are being paid, teachers are being paid, um, uh, the oil companies are paying taxes, they are modernized. When you walk the streets of Moscow or Yekaterinburg in the Urals, all of a sudden you see people who have their dignity back. It's just enormous, enormous achievements. And uh, uh, the sad part of all this is that uh, Russia, as it is now, could be a great ally of the United States. And there's something strange and not, not really moving in the right direction. I wish uh, uh, American politics would understand that there's something monumental going on, uh, much more long-lasting. And Putin, for example, uh, could have easily become the dictator, but he steps back as president because the uh, Constitution would, uh, would not allow him to serve three consecutive what, terms. What advice would you give Obama in um, regards to Putin? I think Obama has a more sober view and he's not influenced by, by the kind of propaganda, but uh, I cannot give any advice to Obama anyway. But uh, look at the achievements of, of modern Russia and the modernization of the country. Of course, much, much is still very, very tough to, to grapple with corruption, for example. You cannot uh, uh, f f fix it by decree or by law, so it's a it's a long, slow procedure. But uh, take a good look at Russia, how it is moving ahead, uh, and look at Russia as uh, a natural a natural ally. I got a place to go in the morning. Going to work. I got. Place to go when I ride. Find that under Fifth Avenue.